Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at OS X Server and we're going to look specifically this week at the DHCP service that is built into OS X Server. Now DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Profile and what DHCP does is it assigns IP addresses to the devices on your network so that they can talk to your network and have access to things like the internet and different services and stuff like that. So every time you have a device that gets on the network, usually for most of us, our routers, right, if you're a home user, will assign an address uh, to your particular machine, and that machine will then use that address on your network to interact with your network, I guess, like I said, and get access and get things done. So it basically sets that up for you. Now, server has a DHCP service built in that you can use if you want to manage it from the server interface and have server take care of it, as opposed to having your router take care of it. Now there's some advantages and disadvantages of doing this. Uh, if you're a home user, it's probably better just to let your router uh, handle the DHCP to handle all the addressing instead of having server do it because if your server goes down then all of your addressing goes down as well and that could create some problems so if your hard drive fails on it or and then you gotta wait for a drive to show up or something else happens then all of a sudden you gotta go back in and reconfigure the router to make it work and so in those cases it's usually better to have the router do it for others, like maybe in business situations, maybe you've got multiple networks or you want to centralize um, your addressing and all of that and do it right from this interface, uh, you can use this uh, the application to do this. And that might be an advantage to you because it puts it all in one place and makes it a little easier to manage, especially since you can manage multiple networks right from within this server interface. So if you've got one server that's going to handle all your addressing across uh, you know, multiple networks, then this would be a great way to do that and centralize it for you to make it a lot easier. Now, if you choose to use DHCP with an Apple router, right, with an airport extreme base station, since we've been talking about those and how server interacts with them so that you can open ports automatically without rebooting your router and those sorts of things, uh, you can do that, uh, but there are a couple of things that you need to do to make it work so that you can use the DHCP uh, service on your server. So let me, uh, let me pull up the uh, airport utility and show you what I mean. Uh, so here we are inside our airport utility, right? We're on the network tab here. And I've got it in router mode. I've got it in DHCP and NAT, right? That's our network address uh, translation, right? That's our opening our, that's what we use to open our ports and everything. And you can see here we have our reservations that we set up for certain things over here on the router. And we have our port settings over here. And these are the ports that we may open for different services and such. Uh, the things that the server uh, does for us and then just writes over to the, to the airport uh, extreme base station. Now, the problem is, is if I look at the router mode, I don't have a mode that leaves uh, the uh, NAT open and turns DHCP off. I've only got the option of turning off, um, you know, I'm putting it in bridge mode, which means that, you know, I'm not doing any ports and I'm not doing any address translation. So that's not going to work for me. I could do DHCP only, but again, I'm trying to turn DHCP off so that I can use it within the server interface. So you notice that I don't have this option to just run it with DHCP off or have it just kind of tell, um, tell it that I want the server to manage it. So I've got to do a little bit of work here uh, to get this to happen if I'm using an Airport Extreme base station. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is just show you how this works. And so we're going to come down here to Network Options. And in here, this gives me my DHCP range. And you'll see I've got it right now from uh, you know, 10.0.1.2 up to 200. Well, in this case, what I would want to do is I'm just going to limit it to two addresses. And so I can't use point one because that's the router's address itself. Um, but I would go from point two and then I would just change this number here to three. So that that way I'm only assigning two addresses and that's all that my router is handling. All right. That, that will allow me to open up that range for the server. Now, uh, make sure that you keep this uh, enable NAT port mapping protocol. Make sure you keep that there. And then I would put save there and then save it for these two addresses. I'm just going to say cancel because I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, now, once I'm done with that, then I want to go in and go ahead and make a reservation for my server like I did before. And that would be, let's say, the first address. So let's say I make it 10.0.1.2 for the server so that it has its own address. 
And then I would come in and hit the plus here and just add a second address for uh, just a bogus device. So I could just make this up, you know, this filler or whatever, uh, put in a bogus MAC address and make sure this says, you know, 10.0.1.3. Right, or because the other one would have been two, and then that way, what I've done is I've taken up the two addresses that my router is going to assign so that it doesn't assign any more addresses to any device on my network so that the server can control all of that. I'm just going to cancel that. And so, once I had those two reservations there, then I would be in good shape and I wouldn't have to worry about it. And it would set up, uh, it would allow me now to use the server for it. So, I just got to put in that, uh, that bogus address there. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, Go ahead and put this down. Let's go back into the server app here. Okay, so once I've done that, now I can go ahead and use the server for the DHCP service. Now, if you're using a different router, a third-party router, you probably won't have to go through all of this. You would just turn DHCP off on that router. Uh, different routers have different protocols, so you're just going to have to look to see where you would do that. But you just want to turn DHCP off so that your server is running it. So here we are inside the service itself. Again, you notice it's offline. We don't have anything set up. We've got two tabs. We've got settings and clients. So let's start with the settings tab. Right away here, it shows me my network. Okay, so this is my current network that I've got. And so I can go in and edit this. And so let me go ahead and do that. And you'll notice on the edit screen here, I can name uh, my network, whatever I want to call it. And it just sort of defaulted to 10.0.1 Ethernet. Um, but I can call it whatever I want to. And so again, if you're in a business and you've got multiple networks, you can name your networks and just set them up in here and they'll be easy to access. I can set the least duration of the different addressing that I do. I can say an hour, a day, seven days, 30 days uh, for people to keep their addresses. So it's up to you on how you want to handle that. I can choose the network interface, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Uh, again, like I said, Ethernet is preferred because it's a wired connection. So the uh, opportunity for uh, signal interference and things getting in the way uh, isn't, uh, isn't happening here. Uh, but you can use Wi-Fi if you need to. Uh, then I put in my starting address. Okay, So in, this, in our case, I would put point 0.4 here because I took up 2 and 3 on my router. And then I can go up as high as I want. In this case, we went up to 253. Then I put in the subnet mask uh, for whatever my subnet is, and then it defaults the router's uh, address. And then in here, I've got my DNS that I want to choose for it and my different name servers. So I just click Edit. It automatically fills in my uh, router and the other addressing that I got. And then I can add in any search domains I want. You know, if you got an ISP or if you want to have it search Google, whatever you want to put in there, I can have it default to those search domains. No, I'm just going to cancel that. So once I have those set up, I say OK, and then it adds that network to my interface. Now I can cancel a network anytime I want, or I could even just add a new one. If I just click a plus here, add a new one, it's all set up here. I give it a name, set up all these pieces, and have it up and ready to go. I'll go ahead and cancel that. So again, you could, that's how you can manage that. Now on the next uh, tab here, we've got the Clients tab. And in this tab, this is where I would set up new clients. And so these would be just client machines that I'd set up. And so for instance, if I came in here, this is where I would do all of my different static addresses or my DHCP reservations that I did on my router. So I can come in here and I can say, you know, uh, let's say MacBook Pro. And I can put that information in there, whichever network I want to put it on. If I've got multiple networks, it'll show all of those in this drop down. I can say what address I want to give it. And let's say I want to give it uh, 20. And then I put in a um, MAC address. And I can make one up, you know, you know, uh, something like that. Just make one up and say create. And so what it's going to do is create this uh, static address here for me. And you can see there's for the MacBook Pro. It's the address that I'm reserving for it. And it's on this particular network. And so I can do that for all the different devices I've got. And so again, this is where you do that addressing. And so if I just came in here and highlighted this, now I've got access to this gear where I can edit the client if I want to and go back in and edit. And, uh, and if it wasn't a static address, I could create a static address uh, for this particular one if I wanted to. And so then again, you just kind of go in and add addresses for all the different devices that you've got, and then you can manage them all from this interface. Once I'm done, then I go ahead and throw the switch, and the service is live, and then I'm up and ready to go. 
Uh, so that gives you an idea of the DHCP service built into OS X server. Again, pretty simple, uh, not too complex, but it does a lot of different things with it, right? It does all of the addressing. Like I said, I would use it uh, only if you're really sure that your server will be up and running and uh, if you're in a situation where you really need that to happen. If you're a home user, I wouldn't worry about it so much. Uh, but if you are in a business and you've got those multiple networks, it can be a very convenient way to manage your users. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.